This is the Blockade Pimple Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus. Joining me as always, halfway across the world, is Jared Morgan. Hi. I already started off bad by hitting the wrong button there, Jared. Uh, how's it going, Chris? How's fingers, it going, everyone? Fingers on keyboards are difficult. <laughs> they are. They, see, it's, it's hard work. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, uh, uh, in this side of the world, we had Father's Day. And, oh, uh, yeah, right. Um, I was gifted with a doppelganger of myself. <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. Here, hold on. Let's, let's really sell. Let me put the glasses on like I normally wear. Uh, and then there. It, it's like it, the likeness is uncanny, <laughs> really. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So that's like you can actually pop yourself, basically. Pop yourself. And yourself. even more than that, look at the name on the box. Far out, okay, right? That mustn't be cheap to do. Like, and they're uh, to do, like a one of order. one of one. <laughs> oh, that's so rad. Yeah. That's really rad. Yeah. Um, so my wife had found this thing where it's like, yeah, pop yourself or whatever it is, and uh, she tried it with her and the kid, and it was just like, eh, whatever. And then she put me in. She was like, oh my god, <laughs> it's like, how is this so accurate? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that was a. Yeah. Because it's, I imagine it'd be, it'd be key facial features. I mean, because they're all going to be round, bubble head style shapes. It's just the distinguishing facial features that would make it more poppable than others. Yeah. So you, mine would be very nondescript as well because I don't have any key facial features either, really. So yeah, that's cool. It looks so good. It looks so good. <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a good laugh. Um, you can tell I'm I'm no longer having the coughing fit, thankfully. That's nice, yeah. Well, how long has it been since we recorded last? It feels like... Uh, almost a month? Know. Yeah. I think. So that's probably why. If you still had the cough, then I'd be, I'd be recommending you go to the doctor and get checked out. So the, the <laughs> fun thing was, I was still coughing for probably three days after. Um, mm. But the coughing that I was doing, it wound up... I don't know if it's... Uh, it gave me a my sciatic nerve is fired. <laughs> oh, and okay. so I guess that's from if you uh, like herniate a disc, then it causes mm. you know, pushes pressure on that, and uh, so for a little while it was really like just painful to move with my left leg. Um, but then as right. I was doing all my rounds in the park and everything, all the walking that really helped work it out. Um, oh, that's good. Now it's too. It'll either go two ways. It'll either work it out, or you'll be like literally on the floor and able to move at all. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the only issue I have <laughs> is if I sit on a hard chair, within mm. minutes, I can't. It sit. comes back. It, oh, it's oh, just wow. like painful, um, and I have to like basically somehow take the pressure off of where it is so it's like crossing my legs but then my leg goes numb and yeah so uh fortunately wow. you know my okay. job i'm mostly standing so <laughs> so that's good yeah um yeah nerve stuff is weird eh? well you know getting old sucks let's not do this it do does that. it does yeah. and i mean everything that i read about the sciatic nerve is it'll go away eventually unless it doesn't mm. in which case you've got other issues but <laughs> but Good. it's not going to be a bye see you in a week no it's gonna linger for a while <laughs> yeah so you gotta have strategies to try and yeah level it out a bit yeah i guess um let's see what else uh since last time we talked jared i believe furiosa came out did oh, yeah. you witness no, furiosa no i did not witness furiosa in the movies <sighs> you're um, part of the problem <laughs> yeah, I know. yes, I know. I am. I'm the problem. It's me. Uh, yeah. Why aren't you people? Why didn't you go see this? It's brilliant. <sighs> in the in the movie cinema, because yeah. I don't I don't have the habit of going to movie cinemas anymore. Like, and, that and honestly, is, that's. I mean, I think most that's people, the problem, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What um, I am thinking of doing is going to go and see, strangely enough, Inside Out two okay. in the cinema. Okay, explain this to me. I don't get this. Why is that a go see it in the cinema? And, and Furios is not. I, because I'm, I'm you're flabbergasted. more heavily invested. You're more heavily invested in Mad Max than I am. Uh huh. Right now, I saw and you call yourself Inside Australian too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> just because it was, just because it had its original roots in here, um, doesn't mean I'm rabid about it like you are. But 
I did go and see Inside Out in the cinemas when it first came out. Sure. And it's it's something about Pixar animated features. And in particular, I remember the scene in um, Inside Out where you got to see the entire map out of Riley's brain. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, wow, this is on a grand scale. And, you know, that was back then when Disney Pixar movies were relatively decent resolution. But now they're projecting these things in what 4k in most cinemas yeah um it's gonna look incredible on the screen in a large format and there's gonna be heaps of that happening in this movie so it's like hmm i almost feel like going to gold class you know which is the australian version of like you know recliner seats and food service Mm -hmm. delivered to you and just doing this because it's you know it's gonna be a really good movie to see um on the big screen for it's, that reason because it's just so detailed like there's so much going on in it you know it, it's so weird right now i mean i don't think anybody can predict what what is going to get people out to a movie theater and what isn't um mm. because there's been a couple of things even before furiosa where it was like oh this will people go to and people didn't go to it and it's like what and then all of a sudden pixar or uh, inside out 2 comes out and it's just like breaking records and i'm like okay i mean and I mean, thankfully, Deadpool and Wolverine is tracking for the same kind of thing, um, which, you know, makes a lot of sense. But there's other movies that are coming out that you're like, I don't think that's going to do anything. And it, like in other years, it would be a, you know, yep, slam dunk. That's going to do really great. So it's really. Uh, well, because, you know, people go, you know, I can't afford it with the cost of living at the moment. Like, you know, you know how much it costs to go to a standard price cinema screening here in Australia now? Hmm. It costs twenty six dollars. Okay, so that will be most of the reason. I'm not sure you can get them. Disc- I've seen some discounted tickets down to about, if you know where to look. Yeah, down to about thirteen, fourteen bucks. But you know, if you got to drag your kids along to the cinema as well, you know, that's multiples of let's say thirteen bucks. You know, um, is what the kids' price is. It's twenty six bucks. Yeah. Then you've got you know your ticket on top of that, which is like you know another um 13 bucks so now you're nudging you know um 43 something um and then you've got you know the obligatory snacks and stuff yeah i don't do the that's obligatory fi- it's 50 <laughs> it, it's 50 it's 50 it's 50 bucks just like that yeah yeah the, and the, the snacks are such a ripoff i i just like nope we'll smuggle on our own we i'm not paying those prices that's just yeah, I don't buy them there, but you still got to buy them somehow. Like even if you buy them from the supermarket, there's still a cost involved. Yeah. So, and you take, we do definitely, absolutely take our own little Ziploc bag of lollies in the cinema with us and do it smart. There's no way we're paying stupid prices at yeah. cinema, but you know that's half the problem as well, isn't it? Because that's where they actually remain profitable. Yeah, we, when... we've talked about at length before. But you know what it is though, hmm. the reason why Inside Out and Despicable Me and all those ones are doing well is school holidays. Like you take your kids along yeah. to them. That's why they do well. Yeah. Um, when Jaron says that, uh, you know, I love me with some Mad Max hanging directly over my monitor. <laughs> oh wow! You got yeah. a calendar. Yeah. Well, no, I glued the poster that I got from the movie theater when I went and saw it to the calendar because the calendar is out of date. It's a Star Wars calendar. Right. Um, oh. But that just lives on my wall. <laughs> that's All right. That's what stares me down whenever I'm at the computer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So. And didn't I get you at one point some Mad Max yes. pins from Netherworld? Yes, yes. I do they, have. They'd uh, be somewhere. I do have pins. They are uh, da, 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 up on that little board back there. Oh, <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Because those are all my uh, all my Disney pins that we get as cast members. And I put those up there too. That is pretty cool. So look, they're they're immortalized. Yes, they yeah. are immortalized. And then Morton Joe's up there. Been, so. I so. <laughs> We talked about we we've done the obligatory things that we normally sometimes don't do on the Black A, which is the movies and the snacks. Yes. Um and we got the pinball, but before we do the pinball, mm. um, I have been deep diving into these three D I guess you could call them three D wooden jigsaws, but they're kind of also models as well. There's okay. a company called ROKR or Robot Life. And they they do like kinetic ball sculptures and all these things that basically you you get like these sheets of pieces and you just 
plug them together. Yes, I've seen um, those, and they do make a pinball machine, which I think... Yeah, I've got that. Yeah. And I, I built that as well, uh, like in last Christmas. So, but uh, that's got me hooked on these things. But the They're ball so coasters, I am I am always have been a sucker for the the kinetic ball coasters, and I, I yeah. truly believe that that's part of my love of pinball. Um, mm. Just seeing a ball in motion doing random weird things... And I remember being really impressed as a kid going to a museum and they had just a very large, very Rube detailed machine. Just, mm. And, you know, these balls were going every which way and I, I could just mm. stare at it for a long time. Oh, same. <laughs> yeah, hard agree there. Like, I, I had the similar thing. We had one in the airport and I, I was just sitting there for an hour watching this yeah. thing do its thing. It was amazing. Especially but when there's... you get the slow buildup of, like, certain balls that they're just, they slowly stack and they need like five of them before they actually tilt the lever, but it's gonna yeah. take about five minutes for that to happen. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. So, I I made up this like one of the so they call it a um a spaceport or something like that, okay. and it's it's really cool. It's got a lot of different pathways the balls go. It has that that stacking thing where the balls go into this little rack, and then it needs another ball to trip the levers, and they all fall out. Really, really cool, but the robot life have released a an, an extra module like in that same series um and if you make that one up and get this little link kit you can actually link both of them together and motorize them Ooh. so they both they both go together and they work in concert with each other so you've got like so a have super a guess what sculpture I did. yeah have a guess what i did <laughs> I, went <and> bought, <laughs> I went and bought that second one and i bought the link motor kit so <laughs> i am going to be building that I don't know when. Maybe I'm going to try and hold off until Christmas holidays, but I may just very well do it now. Uh, how long um, does it? How long does it take to construct one of those? It's it's non-trivial. Like you, you could do it in a day, but it's like the entire day to build one. Right, and and but there is a. I mean, you're basically cutting the pieces off of a sheet, right? Uh, I mean, I know they're perforated, but yeah. Yeah, you just you you pop the um you pop the little pieces off, and occasionally they they give you everything you need pretty much in there. So you've even got like a little piece of sandpaper. I was gonna say, are you having to... to sand the pieces to just get the burrs off? And sometimes, but they usually come out really clean. Like they've got obviously a really really fine um, CNC machine that they use to cut these boards out, and they're really thin. So they're only be I don't know what they translate to in inches, but they might be two millimeters thick boards. Yeah. Um and the the pieces are so well engineered. Everything is push fit in all of them, so you don't need glue or anything. You what if just it's push a, them all together. If it's a laser cutter instead of a CNC. Machine. Yeah, a, la- a laser CNC. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because yeah. you can see like there's like little scorch marks on the um the wood where it's cut through. Yeah, but it is like I really if you if you can get them over there and you can get them at a reduced price because. We've got this um, sort of homeware store here called Spotlight, and they actually are stockists of it. And they'll sometimes do 30 to 40% off. Ooh. And you can get these kits for like, you know, a full price 30 40% off. And that brings them down to like below, like for the marble run, that's like less than 50 bucks. Oh, to get see, this okay, yeah. Kit. I know that when I took a look, and I might be looking at a different company. What was the company that you're dealing with? It's it they you see them as R O K R or Rocker or Robot okay. Life. Okay. Um, they're the ones that are original, I think. Um, because I think but, when yeah. I saw them, it was like the cheap one was ninety bucks. Uh. Oh wow. Okay, that seems. And then there was. High. But again, I might be looking at it. I doubt I'm looking at a different company. I'm sure it's it's the same company that did the pinball machine, though, right? Yes. Okay. Then no, that's I'm looking at the right one. Um, I think the pinball machine in US dollars is probably about ninety bucks. Okay. Um, and and it's it's every bit's worth ninety bucks because you actually have little solenoid actu- actuators in there that mm-hmm. pop the pop bumpers and everything. So yeah. there's a lot of electronics going on in that. But yeah, I can't wait to get this thing built. But in the meantime, to sort of satisfy that, they've got these this other ch- like sort of offshoot of it called uh, Rocker Life. And these are like these little bookshelf inserts that light up. Um, So say you've got like a a bookshelf and you've got a a pile of books, you could slot one of these sort of modules into your bookshelf. And it's like a little scene, like a little life under glass, if you like, um, uh, of like a a scene. It could be like 
a Japanese Sakura garden or something like that. And this one I got that I'm building now is a like a sunshine theme. It's like a little uh, think of it like a little alleyway with like a little bookshop and a cafe, and it's got a mirror at the back, so it like reflects back the stuff in the mirror. It's really it's really cool um, and fun to build. They're like adult jigsaw puzzles. They they're great. It satisfies my need to build something or restore something on pinball machines because hmm. um, I'm, I'm done with that now. I don't have any more machines to touch. So lucky yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause this is a, the topic of the show right today that we're going to get into. Yeah. So you may have uh, seen my previous video that I posted that now, cause no, I'm not done with a ball deluxe, but I, I mean, a box is done in terms of the hard stuff. Well, the, the making it function properly stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's um, working. It's, it's working. playable. Yes. It's absolutely mm. playable. It works great. Um, you know, after spending two months trying to figure out uh, what was going on with the lights and the scoring and everything. Yeah. It just turned out it was the boards. <laughs> yeah. Re- replace the boards, fix the problem. I keep yeah. telling you. So, um, <laughs> And all the lights are much more brighter now, and there's no flaws going on, and you know, uh, all that's great. It's still I, I still might eventually replace the soundboard, um, mm. just because it's it's scratchy, and the volume you pots. Know, once, once you get once you get that um, new board feeling in your game, you, you don't want any old boards <laughs> in your game anymore. Well, because <laughs> really. With- Really, the ballet squawk and talk. You have two things that you can adjust. You can adjust the music, mm. and you can adjust. I think voice, the voice. Mm. and that's it. And the problem is, is that the and then of course you got the pot that's in the door that you can dial in the sound, and that those things are notoriously mm. just like not great. <laughs> mm. um, yeah, and. Like, if I get the voice as loud as I want it to be, then everything else is too loud. Mm. Um, and so there's, it's like trying to dial it in. Well, I know that the board that, uh, that's listed on at, at Alltech, uh, and they're not the ones that make it, because they were like, somebody else already did a good job. We don't need to redo this one. Yeah, we resell it, so you could just order it all from us. Y- and yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It has three... Individual Individual controls. pots. So it's... Oh, it's right. Sound effects on the table, voice on the table, and music on the table. So you can dial them all That's in. And pretty good. all of it is, uh, they, they re-recorded everything. I mean, it's, it's all recorded on a chip, so it's not actually a oh, function so of the board doing it. Oh, so it's not actually being generated by the board. It's calling files from a, yeah. from a card, which yeah. means they would have been able to clean them up. Exactly. And and made them sound, you know, and, much, much better. And that's why they were able to separate them all. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. That's really smart. No, honestly, that would be, I would be going, yep, how much is that? I'm going to save up for that as well because it's, you know, it's new board, number one. You don't have to worry about 40-year-old silicon on it. Um, and you already know the volume pots are scratchy and dodgy anyhow, so just get rid of the thing, and then you'll have a really reliable machine that it's not going to screw up. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I uh, now that those were done, and I put uh, uh, eight ball deluxe right next to Target Alpha, um, so they're you know properly in there, and then I rolled out firepower into the uh, spot of <laughs> fixing and mm-hmm. did some cleanup on the garage and cleaned up my drawers and in the process pulled out all the parts and laid everything out and it was just a big oh crap <laughs> <laughs> um yep i i just really was just like i don't know what i was thinking well i know what i was thinking I was you brand were thinking, new. Cool, cool. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna go and just fix this up in a couple of weeks. It'll be fine. No worries. You yeah, know? yeah. And everybody goes, "Oh, take pictures." Yeah, I nah. took pictures, but I didn't take the pictures. 
You know what yeah, I mean? you took some photographs indicative of it. Like, yes, that's firepower. <laughs> that's all the pictures that you took. No, I mean, I actually did do segment by segment on the wiring harness because mm. I knew. But what I didn't take pictures of was where every single screw goes and what type of screw goes with what. And I just uh. went, oh, this section. Yeah, let's take all these and throw them in a baggie and mark it as that section. Not mechanism based. No. Yeah. Oh, look, these are the five screws from this pop bumper assembly that I've depopulated. Good. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Don't worry. Like, yeah. You know, the only thing I could say is that I, I did. The, I had a similar experience with um, timeline. Uh, in that it was a while between um, doing strip down and then actually putting everything back on again. I did have the advantage though of reorganizing like i had a little sort of a container with little separate compartments so i kind of had all the same screw in the same thing and i've done enough um got leads to know what screws they use in certain assemblies you know short screws for things like uh stand-up targets long screws for mechanisms is the general rule yeah and you probably find that tr that transfers onto firepower as well um so all you really need, there's only going to be two screws types under the play field. So yeah. sort, sort your screws out in um, two piles and you'll be fine. And it is, it's dirty. It's just grimy on the touch. Um, I, you know, a lot of the metal, like all the lamps and everything, they're pitted. Um, mm. and, and it's, uh, so it becomes one of those things of, well, I want the grime off. But do yeah, I care yeah. about everything being shiny? No, Probably no, don't not. worry about that. Right? Don't just, worry just, about that. Just throw because looking at the cabinet, it's in rough shape. Um, the back glass is not good. It's pretty shot. Um, yeah. I mean, not when you can see actual wires behind, you know, some areas where it's and you can see where the flaking is. Um, no, it's so, like uh, all my back glasses. Yeah, like, it, it's the, just it's just like trash. You know what? This is this is not my project. <laughs> mm. um so it is just going to be a matter of let's get it up and running kind of thing but i can't believe i lost the key to the back box jared <laughs> oh look this it, it happens um as my wife you said know. you probably put it somewhere really safe <laughs> i'm like you're yeah. right i probably did yeah you probably thought oh back Back, back box is where all the stuff is. I don't want anyone getting into there. Well, like, you know, anyone in your garage. Well, no, 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 no. Itself. It's more like, it's more like, well, I don't want that just falling out. You know, as it hangs oh, yeah, in right. the back box. So let's, let's put normally, it somewhere else. The odd thing is normally they're common keyed anyhow. Well, um, okay. <laughs> this is where it gets interesting. Hmm. So my coin door is single, single sided key. Yeah, right. Right. Wouldn't fit in the back box. I'm like, how very weird. Mm. Out of curiosity, then I pulled out the key for 8-Ball Deluxe. It's the exact same number, Jared, as Firepower. It works in the coin door. Yeah, that's really common. Like, all the, all the keys from most manufacturers, when you get them f fresh out of the box, yeah. they're all just the same barrels. Yeah. Um, in fact, I, when I go and order keys from um, for PBR, uh, they're all the same number. So I have the same key that will work in every single one of my machines. Well, I mean, including that's, the back. Yeah, that's it's very ideal. convenient. Yeah, very yeah. convenient. Not good if you're an operator though. No, you, you change it immediately <laughs> to your own barrel lock. Right. You know. Yeah. So <laughs> then I was like, "Well, I'm curious. This does that work?" I pulled the key from Gottlieb from hmm. target alpha which is a double-sided key and that actually yeah. fit into the back box it just didn't open it but it did fit into oh. the back box <laughs> what okay the hell? so yeah you know what you need to get you need to get uh some lock picking mate to come out there and pick the lock for you um and then uh you can go and open up the back box take the thing out and, and, and discover that somehow there. the key to that was in the back box all along uh -huh. <laughs> you know, it's probably it's, it's probably somewhere buried in the back of the cabinet. Have you actually cleaned the cabinet up fully? And Why, yes, back? I have, and that's <laughs> that's where I discovered other horrors, um, like the fact that my power cord, you know, through the wall outlet, is just mated with a, an extension cord, you know, uh, thumb screwed tight to the two wires and electrical taped, and that's what's 
feeding power to the cabinet. Nope. <laughs> I'm like, nope. I think I need to change that. <laughs> That's uh, maybe <laughs> the best. <laughs> yeah. Um, but right. uh, I I wound up putting gloves on my hands as I was going through because it was just like grime. Solid city. idea. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. So yeah, anyway, that's. Uh, I think I gave you this tip that um, if you're doing any work on a dirty machine, baby wipes. Yeah. You know those wet wipes. Yeah. They are very handy to have on hand if you uh, are not using gloves. But your choice to use gloves was a good one, I think. Yeah. My my favorite too yeah. was the uh, balls that were with firepower, are literal sandpaper. Oh yeah. <laughs> and they would be wrecked. And, and I mean, there's a there's a good reason why the table is the way it is, because. It's not like they got that way. I put. Oh, they them, would like that to start with. I though. put them in a baggie. All right. So, yeah, <laughs> they were already stuffed. Like, I mean, because that play field was me. rough. It was rough. Yeah. Right. Um. So yeah, I huh. just I'm like literally just going okay. If if I was purchasing a pinball table today, I would have said no to this. <laughs> Well, if it was in its like as is state with everything in a bag, I would have gone hell no because no. But even know. even knowing what to look for now, mm. uh, oh right. So if this was like oh yeah, this this machine is eight hundred bucks, um, you know, in probably at the time you paid it now to be like a one and a half grand machine, yeah. Uh, but you know, it's like eight hundred bucks. You know, it's got stuff wrong. The boards meh, probably don't really work that much. You know, it's well, I mean, I would have identified immediately that the soundboard is the wrong soundboard. Uh, mm. I would have rubbed my hand on the play field and gone, nope. Uh, nope. I would have seen the back glass and gone, nope. Um, you know, I mean, there's just... You, you would have passed it over for sure. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. now I know what kind of headache I can take on and what kind I can't. <laughs> so what sort of effort is involved in taking that from what it is to what it needs to be to be remotely playable is right. a large distance yes right yes mm. so um but that got me thinking just in terms of because now i've got you know like i said you've got four machines running i've got the uh, mm. uh two pinball machines running and the digital cab going um, yes so it becomes a question of well we're gonna spend your money folks you've got money in your pocket what do you want to go with if you only mm. had the option of being able to get one machine? Would you be better off getting a real machine or would you be better off getting a digital machine? Um, what are the pros and cons of each of these items? Um, and, uh, you know, maybe we can walk you through some of that. Jared obviously doesn't have a, a digital machine, but with four machines, he's got variety. Um, yes. And... You also have a network around you that does machine trading. Yeah, that's right. Yes. I, I have had a couple of guest machines in my garage, which has been amazing. Like I've had a fishtails in there and a Corvette. Um, it's it's like new machine day, except you don't have to pay for them. Right. And I've got a Paragon at the moment. You know, yeah. it's, it's great. So uh, I already wrote out a list. And I decided I'm gonna I'm gonna put Jared on the spot and see if he can come mm -hmm. up with some pros and cons and see how many uh, new ideas he comes up with and how many are the same that uh, I already have. So let's go ahead, Jared, and let's just start off with a pinball machine, an actual working machine. What would yep. you say are the pros of owning or well, yeah, we're gonna call it owning, um, not just mm -hmm. borrowing, but owning. Having a, a one in your garage that's yours, yeah, that you can do what you like with. Exactly. Um, all right. The first thing that's great about having a real physical pinball machine uh, in your garage is that within ten seconds you're playing. Yes. Um, the boot the boot time of a of a real pinball machine, certainly like an '80s machine, probably not so much the Stern, which takes a little longer to fire up. Let's say thirty seconds, but from an '80s machine like Chris and I have. Um, it is ready to go in about 10 seconds. Um, and if you don't have a lot of time, that's really great. Right? You don't have to sit up. You don't have to sit down and turn on your computer and turn on your digital table and then go, oh, updates and oh, this and all that. Yeah. You know, it's just like I'm turning it on and I'm playing. And then I'm going to turn it off again and it doesn't even 
matter. Like I could turn it back on five minutes later and it'll still be in the same state. Yeah, I agree. The number of mm-hmm. times that I have looked at my watch and gone, oh, I got 15 minutes before I need to go to work. Now let's just go out to the garage real quick and uh, have a game or two. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. It's just the bit, like, honestly, it's the the main reason why you have them in your garage. Yeah. Um, okay. So there's there's one. I almost, I, I thought I had a variation of that on my list, um, hmm. but I Close, but not the same thing. So, okay. So, there's one for you. Okay, okay what's give your me, thing? Give me, well, no, I was going to say, well, okay, I'll match what, where my similarity was. And that is, with a pinball machine, anybody can play it. Anybody Correct. at That's any knowledge level can walk up to this thing. And so long as you go, this is what a flipper does. This is what your plunger does. Go. They can do it. And I say that because... Uh, my wife does childcare here. We have uh, one of them is two years old. He just turned three, but mm. I threw him in front of Target Alpha when I got it, and within thirty seconds he understood and was just flipping like mad. So he absolutely got it. Like he each understood. Hand has a role to play. Flip these. Flip make that go. And when the ball, you know, he didn't understand holding or anything like that. But when the ball comes near, yeah, you just flip and watch it bounce around. Um, within about a week, that's pinball. Within about a week, I started saying, "Hey, try this. Just hold the flippers and catch the ball." Did that. Unfortunately, then he always just held the flippers and didn't understand, you know, the physics. But over time, I'm like, that's the kind of stuff that comes and learning a combination in between. But yeah, the point is, is and there's other you know kids that I'm like, here, hop up, have a have a go. Um, whether they connect with pinball or not is a whole different story, but the basics of playing, anybody can join in, and then it's just a learning curve from there. But I can definitely say that point about anyone can understand how to play is correct because Zachary had a couple of his mates come over who had never seen pinball. These are teenagers who had never mm-hmm. seen pinball before. And, you know, I, I had all my four machines on and Zachary said, oh, look, this is really cool. Go and have a go. And they worked their way through each one of them and Zachary told them how to play. And, you know, they're, you know, the teenagers, they yeah. know the fundamentals about, oh, yeah, cool. Oh, yeah, I get this. And then off they went, you know. Yeah. It was no training required, no prior knowledge required. Yeah. They just, they weren't great at it, but they still were able <laughs> to play, you know, and experience pinball for the first time, yeah. you know. All right, what's, a, what's another pro? Another pro is, and this is the my main motivator for doing what I do with pinball, is that other people get to experience it. Um, my four machines you won't find anywhere else in Australia, I would suggest. Probably in a private collection, maybe somewhere in some deep, dark place of Australia. But I'm pretty confident that I'm um, happy to be proven wrong here if anyone is actually listening from Australia and knows the who owns what. I'm pretty confident that my four machines are the only specimens in Australia at the moment. So um, I have a variation of that also where I just said it's a unique feature to a room. Um, yours very are, much so. Yours are very much even more unique to those that under, you know, know pinball. But mm. by and large, walking into somebody's house and seeing a pinball thinking, machine. Oh, a pinball machine. Right. It's... You don't see that yeah. every day. <laughs> Particularly when you have people over for dinner at night and you preemptively turn on your machine in a dark room and it's just glowing in the corner. Enticing. That is, it's impossible not to go up to it and want to interact with it. Yes. Like, it is a piece of art as well. And that's the next point I want to make as well. Okay. Um, the, the, the object that is a pinball machine is in and of itself a piece of art. Um, and, uh, the, the experience you get with a real machine, being able to walk up and like have a really close look at all the dodgy play field art of the eighties with mm. all the scantily clad women and suggestively, um, <laughs> phallic <laughs> characters oh on God, the yeah. play field, you know, it's just like, it, it is of an era. It is an art style. It is, uh, it's a living piece of art. Well, and you know, much like much like art too, it's an investment that holds its value more often than it's not. True. and tends to go up in value. Um, yes, I mean, yeah, if you don't have a common machine, or if your machine is good, you can you can flip and trade and flip and trade backwards and forwards, and yeah. not really lose much money at all. There's, yeah. They're not like cars. No, like, 
they they do actually hold their value within the pinball community yeah relatively well like for example i i got rid of that star race machine um to one of the collectors and then four years later paid exactly the same money to get it back again oh wow like so that's like yeah. I, I i sold it for five grand and i paid five grand to get it back so it, it, there's literally no change in value mm-hmm. so i mean that's great that's like you cannot get a better example of holding value than that uh let's go with uh two more things that you can think of and then i'll fill in the rest um i there's always something you need to do with the machine and uh, this could all this could be a a positive or a negative right but the machines depending on what type you have and what era you have um you can start out with a bit of a a junker machine and get it playable and then you can start just making minor cosmetic changes here and there for example um during the pandemic i wanted to order some stencils from of all places a cake decorating shop for my pink panther machine um i wanted to put pink panther's face on the side of the machine and completely reimagine what the artwork would be like on the side of this pink panther machine because it was very much generic Gottlieb system 80 stencils on the side very boring not even remotely in theme so i i went and i tried to get stencils imported but because of pandemic the u.s companies were not shipping to australia um circle around three years later i thought oh yeah stencils it's coming up to BPAC um this year in july i thought oh i might see if i can do the cabinet art now and yeah sure enough the stencils are on their way and um, this year at bpac the machine will actually have pink panther faces all over the side of the cabinet in pink <laughs> um because that's the that is the only color that you would need to use for pink yeah. panther yeah so so moddable yeah, customizable I mean, um you can you can do whatever you like it's your machine you mm-hmm. can do what you like to it mm-hmm. um so that's the other thing too it's fully customizable um you can strip it back repaint it strip it back again repaint it again i, I like, really it doesn't do feel that pinball ownership is very much like classic car ownership you're gonna have much. you're gonna have those yeah. that are a, they only want it to look original and they're gonna be appalled at anybody that does anything funky to it and then you've got yep. the hot rod community that's just like why would you want a stock body no rip into that thing and make it something <laughs> yeah and you know like you you do have to consider resale when you're making fundamental changes yes. but the thing is that um if the changes are tasteful um and they're well considered you're not like you know turn the cabinet into perspex or whatever and just making a, a clear cabinet, which is cool but it won't appeal to everyone um you know you can pretty much it doesn't really affect your resale value because yeah. people want the game and they want to experience the game as long as your mechanics and your circuitry is working well they don't really care what the cabinet looks like at yeah. all i've had offers on all my machines like pink panther and force 2 with varying degrees of cabinet art really bad back glasses no one cares they just want to, <laughs> they just want the game they want the game um yeah. okay last one that you think is a uh uh, a, a f- pro for owning a pinball machine. Mm, the last one. Um. Well, this is probably more of a preservation thing, but these machines aren't getting older, any younger, right? And I almost feel that if you own a machine and even if it's like a project pin, let's let's use a project pin for an example. If you find one that's not working, it's it's either destined for parts or it's going to be put on the back of a truck and got rid of by someone who doesn't understand the value of it. So, really preserving these things um, and keeping them going is a really important part of like digital, well, not digital preservation, but like physical preservation. Um, so you know you're doing your part if you own a pinball machine to keep the hobby alive as well um i think this falls into what i have as it's a a a piece of nostalgia mm, yeah um that's what you're preserving it's not only a piece of nostalgia though it's actually it spans it actually blows apart generations because oh sure 
now that that nostalgia that was yours is now nostalgia that you're passing on to your kids and they're at least understanding what pinball machines are yeah so that later on in life perhaps they might get into it themselves like for example my sister um has recently started um playing pinball competitively hmm. um with me on every tuesday night because she's she's at a point now where she's able to get back into the hobby she's always wanted to and so you know she's back into pinball again um so it's just planting the seed sometimes with people and sometimes they need to be able to physically touch and interact yeah with a thing to be able to understand it and actually really appreciate what it is and i think a physical original pinball machine in your garage or your room is going to do that for them yeah you know um some of the other points that i had then as possibilities here uh look Pinball machines are there's a replayability factor, like oh, just one more game, one yeah, more that's game. That's something I totally missed. Um, no two <laughs> I've had just one more game for an hour, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I've had recently. I, I don't know if you do this, Jared, but I often will set it up as two player, um, to oh, play yes. against myself. But all yeah. it's it's funny because sometimes I'll be like, I'll be like, man, player one's really sucking. <laughs> and it's just yes. me like all the time yeah <laughs> or i'll be like and, and then i'll be like come on man last ball don't be the underdog defeat player two and it's the weirdest mindset because it's like it's just you <laughs> you're playing chess with yourself here exactly like, you know, um yeah no two balls the are the same you can yeah well that's the thing because no two balls are the same you yeah. can actually have a game with yourself and have a completely different result 100%. because it is it's a random number generator a pinball machine like yeah it is all physics based, Complain. and nothing is ever going to be the same. Um, play it. And then something that uh, I've done on occasion, but not often: uh, you can remove the glass, folks, and practice specific shots or specific conditions by you know just tapping everything that you needed to and be like, okay, this is the thing that I need to practice on. Let me get to that wizard mode without actually getting to the wizard mode, you know, kind of mentality. Mm. Um, and yep. set things up to get good at a certain aspect with that glass off. Well, exactly right, yeah. And certainly on the early machines, you know, you can have the glass off and practice, you know, post-passing mm -hmm. or, or you could do any number of pinball, you know, training exercises. But, you know, doing that on a machine... Um, like a digital machine, is a little harder. Yes. Hmm. Uh, so here's the question, Jared. Should we go into the cons of a real machine or should we go into the positives of a digital machine? Well, let's do a quick like roll through of the cons. Okay, here we um, go. Cons of owning a physical pinball machine. Pinball machines break. <laughs> yes. All the time. So they need, uh, they need new maintenance. They need maintenance. Yeah, pinball machines need maintenance. I mean, that honestly, to me, is a is a pro. <laughs> I actually really like <laughs> like keeping my machine well waxed and and cleaned and and like you know all the joints lubricated yeah. and um, all that sort of stuff. But for some people, and I know this to be true, they they just want to turn the thing on, play it, and they they will never open the glass up. Yeah, uh, and and have a look underneath it and maintain it. Yes. So, you know, um, if you if you don't know the basics or haven't been introduced to the basics it is going to be very daunting for you to actually have a machine in your house yeah um without some basic level of understanding of mechanical concepts yep um the the other thing is getting parts um so parts in for the most part the basic things like things to make your flippers work and stuff like that switches contacts you can get them but in the case, uh, certainly for me, that's usually from overseas. And I yeah, have you're in a whole different in. basket there. And that that does add challenge and expense to the hobby. Like it is in in that respect, it is very much like in, in the fact that you know you've got to spend lots and lots of money on it to um, get the thing um, working. You know. Yeah, I really. It, uh, for me, with that, it's just like I just want a pinball store that I can walk into and buy the parts. I hate that I have to yes. order it and wait for the shipping oh. and then go, oh, that wasn't quite the color I was thinking of, you know, or, or whatever. Yeah. I just want to browse this stuff. Uh, not online. 
but see it physically in person and and go that route. But um, so this is a really cool thing that we have here in Brisbane. There's a guy who actually does import a selection of Gottlieb parts and imports a whole bunch of Belly Williams parts. So he has he actually you can walk into his shop and pay a premium for it. Yep. But you can go, yes, I just need to get a flipper replacement kit. And chances are he'll have one in stock immediately then and there. You won't oh, have wow. to wait at all. And it is it is honestly such a, an amazing service that he's offering for people who are caught short. And like, my coil is burned out. I need a coil. And this thing's going on location. Oh, you know, Pinball House yeah. is the company who does it. So I he think can, that kind I of makes it... it. Uh, I had this written down uh, as a con. A new machine, mm. very expensive. An old machine, it's a money pit. <laughs> yes, um. <laughs> quite true. And honestly, this is true of all the new machines that are coming out of Stern and all the other boutique ma manufacturers. New does not necessarily mean maintenance-free. No. Um, you're going to get a period of time when you don't have to do anything on a machine but it's going to come a time when something's going to screw up and normally on the new machines it is way more expensive than an old machine as well because you've got things like sophisticated node boards and all these really high electrics in there that you know if one of these boards screws up see you later 200 bucks like you yeah know. The, the advantage, though, is that those parts are much more readily available. They um, are available. As so opposed money, to, you know, you're looking mm. for a clear ramp for Whitewater. Good luck. Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. um, you know. Uh, so, okay. Uh, let's see. So we have maintenance. We have the cost. What else we got? Um, moving them. Yes. <laughs> They are difficult um, to move and very heavy. <laughs> very heavy. Um, and if you if you're doing a, if you're a renter, don't buy a pinball machine uh, <laughs> because they are uh, they will limit your um, your ability to find a place that's suitable. Because ba basically, if you've got a pinball machine, you're looking for a rental that's pinball machine suitable, <laughs> just like you would if you had a pet or some other piano or something like that. Right. You're, it's no longer a house. It's a shelf where a pinball machine is stored. Which, <laughs> right. okay, so this goes into something else I have written down here, and I get, I think it will work. For for one, they are very space intrusive. Oh, they've got a huge footprint, which was the, the fundamental problem with them, right? Yes. And it's a footprint um, that sticks out far. Like, they're narrow, but it sticks out far. And yeah. It just it ruins the flow of walkways and this is oh it's you've got to have a dedicated room for it or a corner really yeah. it's got to be a corner or yeah. a wall and you've got to make a conscious decision that I'm only going to have a pinball machine there right <laughs> like, it's like this is the pinball machine wall and I then have to put related furniture around it to kind of make use of the space yes and then right. related in terms of what your uh, thing about if you're a renter and you had one of these machines. They're noisy. They're yeah. really loud. And there's no turning down the volume on them. Because no, those have mechanics one... have one volume and one volume only. <laughs> I wonder what it would be. I've never done this experiment. With the glass on, yeah. what, uh, what is the decibels of a pinball solenoid? It's certainly like quite different. Glass. It's I reckon it would be like 50 decibels, eh? Like, to when you have the glass on... Uh, and, and everything sealed up. Like, I'd still percussive and loud. Like, things are whacking up against things in there. So, but even if you imagine if, if you were on the, if you had it on the second floor, you know, and somebody was living below you, the vibration alone from the machine and those solenoids oh. is going to vibrate through the floor. <laughs> oh, it absolutely is. And, so. uh, like, and aside, there's a community out there that does, like, um, like drums there's a drum game that i've mentioned on the show yep. and you know some of these people obviously are living in apartments and they have had to have special sort of cushioning stages made up for their drum kit mm. so that they can actually play their drums in an apartment complex without disturbing neighbors like 
even with an electronic drum kit, there's still a percussive element to it, like with the bass pedals and stuff. So think about that and then multiply it by about 15 with a pinball machine. Yeah. And you've got yourself a bit of a cacophony of sound. Um, the the last thing that I have on the list, and I think you uh, will go, oh, yeah. Game fatigue or boredom. You have yep. one one title if you only have the one machine. You're going to yep. get bored of it. There's no you doubt You absolutely about it. are going to get bored of it. And one of two things will happen. You, the machines will stay off for longer or they or you'll have to work out if you want to sell it and then lose that game or buy another one so fresh content with with real pinball machines is a is a definite thing that you need to think so the only advice there would be if you're going to buy one game buy one game with a huge depth to it yeah um if you don't want to have to get rid of it quickly and you don't have mates who have other ones you can swap with that being said, I think me and Jared have also realized this. The best way to fight game boredom is you have another game right next to it. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> that, so plays, the other, this is... that hopefully plays quite differently um, or has mm. a whole different skill set of things to do on it so that you're, it feels fresh bouncing between the two or more. And this is the problem. This is either, I don't know, a problem, or like a pro or a con, <laughs> but pinball machines tend to multiply. Yes. Uh, the, once you get one, then, well, you know, I could have, I, I need another one, really, because I'm getting bored of this one. Maybe if I've had another one, it would be, it would be good. But then you go, well, two looks odd. I, I should really have odd numbers. Yes. Because odd numbers are better. Uh-huh. And then you go, well, hang on, now I've got three. I need to get five. <laughs> well, you, you, you have three and you go, but there's still room for two more. But I, can, I mean, I've I can already, the, the wall together. is already dedicated at this point. There's not yeah, going to be a chair there. You might as well just fill up the rest of the wall. I may as well just put another game there, yeah, really. Yeah. You know, you know. You know I've, I've had this <laughs> like debate recently. I've gone, because I've got five machines in the garage at the moment. And mm -hmm. at one point, I did actually have six in there mm. on one wall. It was tight. But it worked. So I've actually now realized that I've got a six pinball garage. And that's a dangerous thing to know. Well, and this uh, is when I was in the league. Um, once you have six, you can now start hosting. Yeah, you've got a collection. <laughs> you like, have a, that's a, you that's have a, a large enough collection that you can host uh, and have people over with, you know, four people rotating on each machine. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That that's a that's a party right there. That is a party uh, right there. That is a party. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so those are pros and cons of the uh, actual machine. Um, I'm going to give you what my pros are for a digital machine, Jared, and I think you'll agree with. Even though you don't have one, you'll understand what I mean. Uh, the yes. number one being no maintenance. Zero maintenance. Except Zero maintenance. PC. It's not except on you. PC. It's on the software developer. True, but you've got to maintain your hardware still, uh, like video cards. I'm not doing that. cons yet, Jared. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so technically, if you want to play a pinball machine, you can play it. Yes. And there's no problem with it. Which yeah, leads into my next one, which is there are thousands of titles, and you can have them all in one machine. Um, yes. And with those thousands of titles, it's not you can have it from various manufacturers um and i'm talking even with just doing the like you know doing it from zen and zacharia uh and even if you had even done it with pinball arcade yeah. you know those are the paid ones let alone yeah. if you dip into the bpx territory um oh yeah and doing recreations there but on top of the recreations of actual pinball machines there's also all the only in digital machines that are available you know uh, mm -hmm. if you're like well, how come there's never been a harry potter machine there is you know there is a harry potter machine yeah. right you know somebody has made one pretty much somebody has made one out of everything um yeah you if know. you could think it, it's like rule 24 on the internet uh <laughs> it's if, if it exists it's someone's done it yes <laughs> um with digital you can very much control the volume i can make my machine silent if i wanted to uh, yeah, and you can also use headphones, which is amazing. 
I can't um, use headphones on mine. Right. Okay. Yes. Right. You, you, there is an option um, if you want to set it up that you can. You got to buy extra hardware for it. Well, okay. But, yeah. 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 Um, but it's, it's, you can do it. The digital pinball machines, they come in various sizes. So you can actually mm. fit to the room that you have. They've got everything from, uh, you know, the, like the, the tabletop. One-up arcade size. Yeah, they've yeah. got the mini pin that at game sells. My, the, the at games 4K is a three-quarter scale. And then you mm. can go to the full-on wide body size, full tilt cabinet. Um, massive thing. Massive yeah. thing, yeah. So, I mean... Yeah, uh, space. You can have an experience with a digital cab um, for virtually any size space yeah. that you you actually have. Um, and I mean, you don't think with digital cab as well. It's like it doesn't. While we while we're talking about digital cabs, you you don't even necessarily need to have a cabinet. You can set up screens in a way that suits you to give you a cabinet experience and have a control. Box you can. As well. I'm though kind of limiting. I want to limit it more towards cab versus cab experience. Righto. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, just because like an actual physical thing to walk up to and interact. Because with I had, you know, I have my pin sim, and I can mm. rotate my monitor and flatten it out. And I'm mm-hmm. sorry, it's just not the same as walking up to the cab. And yes, it's a one minute boot time. But it's still it's relatively quick. Minute. It's quicker than loading up Steam. <laughs> mm, yes. um, and I'm that and would... I'm playing, you know. So and mm-hmm. and standing in front of a machine that weighs that amount, and with your physical flipper buttons, and you can actually nudge and everything, and it's it feels real. It feels real, and that's just it. It is real enough while playing. Um, I keep yes. on hearing people say it's eighty-five to ninety percent there as a real machine. Mm-hmm. Um, that sounds. I reckon that that sounds about right. Yeah. Granted, that final ten yeah. percent, that's a it's a huge gap. Um, yeah, the ten percent is the big ten percent. It's a big ten percent. Sure. But while mm. you're standing there playing, I'm sorry, you literally do forget that you're not playing a real machine. Yep. It's... I, I can imagine that, and like, I've I've not I've played a couple of like I have actually experienced a digital pinball machine. Um, before one of the friends of the show a while back had one here in Brisbane and yeah. I went and actually stood in front of it, played it. Um, it was, it was at the time it was a bit underbaked um, because it was, I think it was about five years ago, even before the pandemic, but you know, technology has advanced so much now that your, your ability to have a pinball like experience, even with a commercial product like uh, at games, legends, 4k, um, that's got everything in it that does what a pinball machine does. It has the exciters in it. It you feel the action on on the playfield, even though there's no ball rolling around. Like there is smoke and mirrors illusions happening in digital pinball now. Yeah, that make you go. This is the, like that eighty five to ninety percent might have been seventy percent in the past, mm-hmm. but we're at the point now where it's like this is so close to being the real deal that I can forgive it as a as a thing right yeah so it's ve- it's getting better and better that's the thing it's getting better and better so if you invest in digital pinball now in a way that you can upgrade and do stuff to it you, you you're kind of in a good position i think yeah. really now um the uh so i know that stern has their uh I forget what that app is that they, you know, you can scan. Uh, Stern Insider. Stern Insider, right. Which mm. is technically leaderboards of a sort. Yeah, it is. Right? Um, yeah. Leaderboards and achievements, basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But with playing digital pinball, uh, the leaderboards are much more assured because everybody's playing the exact same software. The conditions mm. are the same. Uh, so there's something about beating everybody on a worldwide leaderboard as I did with World Cup Soccer on Ad Games, that is, you're like, yeah, that that felt good. That, you know. Yep. Um, so I like that online leaderboard aspect for that. Um, and then there's the economics to a point of these. Um, mm. 
The virtual cabinets, they're still expensive, but the entry price is way less um, than a physical machine that is working 100%. So let's let's talk like let's do an example of that, right? Yeah. So at the moment you're in the US. Yeah. You want to buy a you want to get into digital pinball. Yeah. You know, if if you wanted to like get a good um experience with digital pinball, not have to worry so much about doing any configuration or futzing about too much. Like and I am leaning obviously into the at games program yeah. here because it is probably the 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 best entry level or mid level um, pinball product yes. out there for consumers. What's what's the damage? Like, what are you paying US dollars if to get you, like if a full you, a full Monty? The full Monty, like, two you know, grand. Two grand. Yeah. Like, and you know, if you could find a pinball machine for two grand, in comparison over there in US dollar prices you would be looking at a system uh, like a, an 80s maybe maybe early 90s machine i don't think even um, early 90s i think you'd be absolutely looking you would be looking at just um numeric displays yep. only not alphanumeric no nope. so you know your options are limited if you're looking dollar for dollar and for on dollar. top of that the titles that are going to be available to you are not going to be the ones that you're hoping for um absolutely not you know it's no. gonna be things like road kings um yeah. you know road it's, kings. Uh, you know games you've never heard of. <laughs> it's, it's not gonna be it's definitely not gonna be games like you know the top 20 games like medieval madness and attack from Mars. i doubt and... it's even gonna be the top 70 um, um yeah you know it's it, not it, it's you're just you're gonna i've i've because i've looked i keep on looking at prices and seeing what things are and Anytime I see one that's, you know, sub 2000, I'm like, oh, well, that's a bargain. Do I know that one? Maybe. Yeah. Like, I think I've touched have it. I, heard once. Of that before? I don't know. And then you're looking at the condition that it's in going, whew, okay. Uh, hmm. Still needs work. Okay. You know, so. Um, and there's this classic thing. It's like, you know, all the new people that come into a, a pinball buy and uh, sell. Uh, Facebook page or whatever group you're using to do it will go, oh, I'm really looking for a Playboy. Um, <laughs> how much for a Playboy or a Kiss? Yeah. And people are just going, how's five grand sound minimum for a bit of a trash one? Yeah. And you never hear from them again. Nope. Like, because that's that's the price of these ones. It's stupid. It's stupid money Yeah. for these these games that everyone thinks they really want, but really are actually kind of hot trash um, compared with the other games out there um in the in the real space so you don't have that problem with digital pinball you can have both of those tables if you really want to yeah um plus about uh, the 500 more yeah right <laughs> you know so it's and the, the other thing too with digital pinball and this is definitely the case there are, the amount of community to support out there that these people are just doing because they're passionate about digital pinball and they're they're heavily invested in it themselves is is amazing like the 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 community around digital pinball is massive yeah and you if you know where to go uh and you um get into a community that's supportive and um really wants you to be successful as a new person to this hobby it, you're going to have a really good time. In fact, you might even make new friends online if it's the right sort of community forum um, for this sort of thing. Yeah. So the you know the sense of community is just as strong on the digital space as it is in the real pinball like tournament scene or going to a pub or interacting with things. You know. Last uh, pro is uh, should I want to? I can play video games on my cabinet also. <laughs> I've got the it controls. Is, uh, I can play. It, I can play computer. vertical games. So, mm. yeah, you like shoot 'em ups. You yeah. like shmups. Yeah, you can. Want to uh, play Pac Man the way it should be? Good. There you go. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Guess what? <laughs> yeah, pinball machine uh, main monitor is quite a good shmup uh, yes. cabinet for yeah. playing things. Uh, let's move on to the cons, though. Um, mm. So, main con: latency issues. Um, yes, that's the. That is the battle no matter if you're playing what's in the included box on at games or if you're doing VPX 
or you're doing Steam versions, latency. That is the number one issue, and it's what everybody's trying to battle. Everybody's trying to find the best solution, um, and it's just it's always yep. going to be there. And I hate to say it, Zen has latency built in. Mm. Even with the you know, even if I'm just playing with a controller on my PC, there is a little bit of latency, and then you there is. put it into the cab, and now it becomes even more you know noticeable. Um, fortunately yeah. I've been able to, I've been able to make the mental jump. It doesn't even bother me anymore, but I just had my buddy come over the other day. He had never touched it one flip and he's like, Whoa. <laughs> and yep. I was like, Oh, you noticed that? And he's like, yeah. I was like, okay, i am just, I don't even notice anymore. So, and that's, that's the thing. Like it is, whereas pinball in real life is like instantaneous yeah. and, it there, obviously you know there is no latency because it is it's a physical machine um the you're right in that the you can get used to the, the latency and um it doesn't really become too much of a problem um after a while but it's the problem is after a while right when you're first getting into machines and you're expecting this amazing experience like you have in the arcade you you're going to feel disappointed yeah like initially and you really need to go in eyes open with that when you're going into digital pinball and to to resolve the problem honestly it can take thousands of dollars to mm. resolve the problem if you really want to get it down to like millisecond latency and even sometimes that's not possible with some commercial products like yeah. you were saying with with zen pinball with the frameworks they're using the everything else you know it's up to the vendor the software manufacturer to manage that element of it so you really are at the mercy of the vendor supplying the software yep. Yep. as to what you're going to get there um another one i have here is that the pc setup can be very frustrating um mm. i'm literally going through it right now trying to get my plunger to act as the plunger um yeah not and, and when i when i say act as the plunger meaning if i pull it halfway it pulls halfway but I want it to mm -hmm. also not be a huge delay when I do it, um, which, and this is where my headache has been because it's the controls in the app game. Are you sending the controls as a keyboard or are you sending it as a controller? The only mm. way for the plunger to work as it should is to send it as a controller. But then it becomes, is Steam interpreting that controller the right way? Or is it fighting with Windows, uh, who's also trying to interpret it? I wound up downloading the um, uh, Epic Game Store onto there just to compare, because Epic Game Store uses Windows for the controller setup. All right. As opposed to Steam doing their own interpretation. It didn't help. <laughs> as a matter right. of fact, Epic Games didn't even recognize the ad games as a controller at all. Right. Um, Good. The only way it would work is if I worked as a keyboard, um, which you can you can have that game say, hey, yeah, it's like it's a keyboard, but then you lose the function of your analog input. It's you pull the plunger, it acts as if you're pushing the enter bar. Um, yep. It's going to pull automatically back and then slowly decrease it, but you can't just release as it slowly decreases. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> um, so, mm -hmm. you know, th there's that frustration. There is the myriad of ways to try and lower the latency. They're setting up all the monitors and getting them lined up how you want them to do. And I haven't even started yet with the whole pinup popper and everything else like that. There's just, it's not, boom, I plugged in my PC, we're ready to go. Mm -mm. There's a lot of frustration that, that's going into this. Um, there's a lot of knowledge out there, but some of that knowledge is old and needs updating. And I'm discovering that right now as I tried. There's a guy that deals with um, a lot of the at game stuff and has a lot of tutorials and everything. Uh, John Wag Wagner. He has mm -hmm. uh, Wagner's, oh, Tech Wagner's Talk. Tech Talk. Mm -hmm. He's great. Uh, yeah. yeah, he just got hired by at games. He got, really? Yeah. Huh. Guess who you think is going to be media silent for a little while? Uh, yeah, him. <laughs> Unfortunately. Now, well, the, mean, good good news is, the good news is I would imagine that because he's now working for them and with them that maybe he can point out a lot of these things to them. But the bad news is um, I reported 
a problem with the plunger, trying to see if Hack Games can solve it. And their answer was, oh, here. And they gave me the link to his page, which is not up to date with yeah. what it needs to be. Yeah, community-led support does have its disadvantages. Yeah. And it does come down to it, its community best effort. Yeah. Um, whereas with a commercial software and like a standalone solution or like a real game, it's like, well, watch sees what you get, yeah. you know. Um, you are at the mercy of the viewing angle. Whatever viewing yeah, angle yeah. you pick, you're at the mercy of it. You can't move your head and see around the object, you know, on the fly. Mm -hmm. You don't get that option. Um, Unless you're using VR. Which is a whole different thing. <laughs> which is... Like, you, you reckon you're having fun with the configuration now. Just throw VR into the mix. Right. And, you know, that might get better when there's more commercial offerings that have VR baked in. Yeah. Like uh, Zen, when they eventually get it done. That will be when I make the switch over to VR mm. and doing it like that. But still, I anticipate it's not going to be smooth sailing. Yeah. Like, I'm still going to have to mess around with computer settings to get that right. Yep. But, you know... It, it's possible to solve, but how much time have you got? Yeah. Um, the games you do play on the machine, they're going to be easier because the ball movements are more predictable because there's mm. not the infinite amount of options that there are in the real world physics. That's just... You have to remember that it is still a video game. Yep. And that's the thing that people don't get all the time when they're talking about things like Zen Pinball and and Zacharia and all that. It, it is at its heart a video game Yeah, that's trying to be a pinball machine. Yeah. And you just need to remember that all the time when you're doing digital pinball. Yeah. Um, still a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. But it's it's not going to be like the same as a ball capture real machine. The uh, digital cabs, while you can make them tactile, they're not nearly as tactile as a real machine. Oh. Um, and I'm going to... The caveat here is when it comes to playing on an EM. EMs are like having a wild live machine underneath your fingertips. You feel <laughs> everything. Um, Everything's ticking and popping, and like if if they were, if you were trying to replicate in reality a oh sorry if you were trying to replicate in digital form an EM machine, the exciters would just not stop yeah. exciting. And yeah. your, your solenoid actuators and stuff will not stop popping. Like, the thing is just constantly ticking, popping, and grinding yeah. beneath your fingers. I'm so, so true. But even yeah. with uh, playing A Ball Deluxe, which is it's surprisingly quiet uh, in mm. comparison, but there are times when that ball is just ricocheting between the pop bumpers and the whole machine is shaking because of it. Yeah. Um, because it's kinetics. The, even though yeah. that little ball is only a little ball, it's still got gravity and momentum. And, and I don't care what actually... kind of exciters you have. Now, maybe on these very expensive deluxe machines where they have a solenoid yeah. for representing every pop bumper that might be, okay, you're going to have a different experience there. Sure. Um, but and that's why I say that it's not going to ever be, though, nearly as tactile. Um, yeah. So... Uh, and then the last two things that I have here. One, tech is going to tech. It's going to become obsolete. That's just yeah. a given. At some point, newer, better is going to come out there. All the people that bought the At Games HD cab are screaming about it right now because mm. now there's the 4K machine and they can't buy any of those titles. If they want them, they have to out. buy the 4K machine. And I have no that's doubt the two grand, right? Mm -hmm. And I have no doubt that three or four years from now, there's gonna be yet another machine with, you know, of course, maybe a PC built inside. I don't know, but it's good. There's going to be another machine, and it's very possible you're gonna have to buy things again. So, um, the other thing that I um want to throw into the mix as well with digital, and certainly digital playing your steam library and all that sort of stuff yeah um on a digital cabinet um you've got you've got a problem where yes you can you can use on the go and connect everything up to your pc and all that sort of stuff but 
hang on, that's like your PC that you use for everything else as well. So if you really want to compare apples to mostly apples, but I'm talking Granny Smith apples to Red Delicious apples here, <laughs> um, um, you really need to have a dedicated grunty PC in your cabinet all the time. Yeah. So that it remains almost like a solid state configuration for that cabinet and then have another PC to play, you know, your, um, all the other games that you like to play apart from pinball. And, and that's literally what I have. I have a dedicated PC that's sitting underneath the cab connected. Yeah. The only thing that's loaded on it is the pinball titles. That's mm -hmm. what it is for. Um, because and... honestly, the punishment of having to go, oh, okay, cool. I just want to go and play, um, you know, uh, an adventure game, you know, uh, on on Steam. Ugh. Now I'm going to lug the thing back to my main monitor and connect mm -hmm. it all up and know what plug goes in where. You know, it gets to the main problem of doing digital pinball, which is, ugh, uh, i got to do the configuration. I couldn't be bothered. And you don't do it. And again, th thinking of price factor there, uh, okay, so I, the PC that I had, it was uh, secondhand. Uh, the board, the motherboard was four years old. There's my bottleneck. Um, mm -hmm. So I wound up going with the uh, RTX 4060 card because it didn't make any sense to get a better video card because it literally mm. was going to bottleneck. There was I would be wasting the money. So I spent $300 on that. But if you were to build up a brand new PC for these, you're easily talking about a grand to $1,200 um, for what you're for, going to... For one that will run things well. Right. So now your and... price factor, now you're at, say, $3,200. Well, if you buy an that games cabinet plus a PC, right. you run all the other stuff on well, it. Well, if you know that that's what the price of that's going to be, how much more is it to get a dedicated cab? Now, now you're not going to get any of those at games titles that are very convenient to use, but yeah, um, you know these are the these are the factors that that you have to weigh in on. Um, but you could go the, down and do like you know uh, how how long is a piece of string is the other problem here. Like you can. If you've got money to burn and you're willing to pay $9,000 for a pinball machine, you could pay $9,000 for a digital pin VPN setup very easily. Um, if you want one that looks and feels and sounds and behaves like a real pinball machine as much as possible, bearing in mind that 80 to 90 cent factor, you can get one that does pretty well, <laughs> but you're paying big coin to do it. But you know what sucks? It's not going to retain its value. No, uh, no one wants to uh, buy it. Eventually, no. eventually, the computer is going to be the old. Eventually, the monitors are going to give out. Eventually, uh, you know, it's it's the programs that you want to run on it are going to make all the other ones antiquated. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not going to hold its value. You're never going to see. You know, I've got a forty-five. No, excuse me, it's not forty-five. It's like forty-eight-year-old machine in my garage right now you're never going to see a virtual cabinet that is, reaches that age. It's just not going to no happen. Way. So, no way. Um, and that's really and the, the other... final the final point there of the digital mm -hmm. cabinet. Um, but it, it's it's a outlay that you will get no return on. Yeah. In fact, you will end up sinking more money into it and yeah. get no return on it. Yeah. So that being said, knowing all the pros and cons of a real machine and a digital machine... Are we saying don't get either? No. <laughs> no, that would not be the recommendation. That would not be the recommendation. We said we want to spend your money. Spend yeah. your money, folks. I'm, uh, I was leery about a digital cabinet, whether I would enjoy it or not. I'm mm. loving the crap out of it. It's fantastic. And I still haven't even gotten it 100% dialed in. But I'm having yeah. a blast on it. Um, and I'm having yeah. a blast whether I'm playing the lower res, not that great lighting of what's available natively on app games. Mm -hmm. And then now getting the uh, on-the-go version using you know the PC. Um, I'm sorry, me playing Demon's Tilt in cab mode is oh. 
bonkers and i'm that is the way to play that game and so yeah. now i haven't purchased it because i'm like really only 10 percent off uh but i will get xeno tilt as soon as next time it goes on on sale yeah um, In- instant buy like you set, set your your um your steam filters to 50 percent off like i do and yeah. then insta buy that thing when it comes to yeah. special it won't um, disappoint you so i mean that stuff is just fantastically fun uh and mm. that and that's great oh. owning the machines now that i have two of them up and playable again mm. it's just i'm also i'm just like i need to go out and whack the ball around on these i walk outside mm. turn them on i'm playing and it, that just one more ball factor completely takes over and these aren't even machines that i necessarily wanted <laughs> um they, they were what was so available for the price <laughs> you know i think i know what you're actually suggesting here mm. why not both <laughs> <laughs> have both have a digital one and a couple of real ones and you're good to go right? i mean there's That's always going to be here. the people that uh are going to argue digital is not the same but you are a fine viewer we know you you started mm. this when we were just talking purely about digital so you don't yeah. have that compunction you're perfectly fine playing digital pinball so yeah. Yeah, I'm saying go ahead, make that leap, get into the cab mode, uh, get something mm. that's up on legs. It's a, just a ton of fun. If you don't want to make that price commitment, uh, buy the tabletop cab or wait just a little bit. Uh, there is a digital controller that uh, somebody that we've been talking to, uh, uh, Gibson Pinball, look them up. I know I've talked about it before. Um, they're going to be having a Kickstarter soon for their product that'll get you that taste that i got with my pin sim cab that's going to entice the you to want to go a gateway for you man it like, was totally as soon the gateway as you had that pin sim yeah like if if then that's maybe the well, other thing to and do. as soon as i had the pin sim space. and put on a vr headset that was game oh. over right there oh yeah that was game yeah. over um so if you don't have the, and this is the other thing like if you go that's cool jared and chris but like i don't have any space at all for a cabinet but i'm i'm gasping to try it then yeah, get like something like the Gibson pinball um, controller, a VR headset, a decent computer, mm-hmm. and and you basically even if you don't have the space to play uh, like you know a, a full cabinet experience in VR with things like VR desktop and stuff on PC, you can put you can put things like um, Xeno Tilt and um, Demons Tilt into tape mode in a virtual screen and have this thing in a f- like 70 inch monitor in front floating in front of your face like that in itself is almost as good as yeah. having a, a physical cabinet that you're actually in front yeah. of like there are ways around not having the space to do it yeah um, yeah and then though with the uh with the buying a real machine just uh know yourself are you a tinker? Mm. Do you want to be like Jared, where it's fun to dig into it and uh, put these mm. things back together? Or are you like me, where you're like, I like to decorate them and play them. Game over. Yeah. I like to make it look nice. <laughs> I like to make them look nice. <laughs> I don't really like all this other aspect that I'm having to deal with. Um, so yeah. know yourself, because you're going to find out real quick when you do that. Um, but I think you're going to I mean, be there are other away. options out there, too. You, you can just pay someone to fix them as well. Like, there's that. But again, the fact um, so, of the matter is, once you have a machine at your house, uh, you want to show it off to people. You want mm-hmm. you can't help but have, you know, be like, hey, you got to check this out. Um, it is a conversation thing. Uh, if you yeah. and your mates come over, you're going to start a little friendly competition. There's no doubt about it. Um, it will end up going towards your pinball machine, and you are going to play a game. It is inevitable. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, mm-hmm. those are our uh, those are our pros and cons of, of owning each. Hopefully, we've laid out enough uh, uh, factors, and hopefully, the cons you were like, "Eh, that's not so bad." <laughs> that con doesn't sound that bad. I could live with that. That's, that's yeah. not bad. Uh, hey, real quick before we go, I found something here, Jared. Oh yeah, what'd you uh, find? Yeah. Uh, well, hey, look at that. That's the site. Yeah, there's his that. space run. But look at this price, Jared. <laughs> Hundred and thirty three ninety. Um, so that one hundred and thirty three ninety will get you both modules plus the joining kit in the middle of it. Um, uh, and like they are like so you'll get that. Dude, that thing is really get, rad looking. It's yeah, that's the new one. 
and it's got like a little ball elevator on it. But the other one, if you um, drop off to the um, uh, the other side, um, there's that one, and then there's one with a like uh, almost like a wooden coil. Um, so there'll be like another one in that um, spaceport one. That's one there, the uh, Marble Knight City. Mar so oh, Marble Knight City. Okay. Yeah, so that's the one that I've got, and um, the Marble Knight City is equally as cool. Oh, like that is rad. Little, it's got a little flip-flop mechanism on the left there where you can stage balls in it and then a ball knocks them out. And they, it's got like about three different pathways the balls can go down. It's just so much fun um, to play and build. So if you if you like, if you're watching this and you're going, geez, I'm a little bit bored with pinball, just go and get one of these and just have fun. You can buy smaller ones if you're not quite sure you like it like smaller connect sculptures yeah so i mean they they, be... they have like this one's only 42 bucks um mm. they got a couple that are just 42 so that's not bad yeah, yeah. um and then if you all are wondering about the uh the pinball machine if i can find it real quick yeah they got all sorts of like stuff real here. random stuff uh, 100 so that's the 3D pinball. 159 for the pinball machine the thing is like I can tell you because I've made this. Like the the thing that really impressed me about it is like how they've made the flippers work and how they've made like the like just the the thought they've put into this thing that you know when you turn it on, if you can just turn it on under power and just have it plugged into a five volt USB port, and the thing just lights up the room and casts a light just like a real pinball machine hmm. does in a track mode, and it's. It's really cool. Like those pop bumpers fire and everything. And it's got little um, opto sensors on the ramps that will actually make those score things, the score stars and everything increase. Like the thing is amazing. It's beautiful. And it's a piece of art as well. Yeah. So maybe start here. Maybe there get you this. Go. Get, spend your 150 bucks <laughs> and get that instead because it's fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Wet your whistle that way. Um, mm -hmm. All righty. Well, that, folks, is all we have for you uh, this week. Um, if you got suggestions for topics, you know, that are a little bit uh, different, where we're not just showing the latest and greatest that's uh, available out there, but something that we can di uh, dig into, please drop us a note on our uh, Twitter channel, at Blockade, uh, on Twitter, not X. <laughs> um, and uh, hmm. uh, or drop a things. comment here in it's... the uh, in the YouTube. We read all these comments. We try and comment back on the, any of the uh, YouTube comments. Um, we are yep. dangerously close, Jared, to having 800 subscribers. I know we never oh, do a really, a, yeah. I know we never do a subscriber push, but I would love to pass that 800 threshold. Um, so if you haven't done yet, just do that. Eventually, we'll hit a thousand, and then maybe earn a penny each time we put one of these up. <laughs> and speaking of earning a penny, we are getting a little bit low on the old blockade. Let's pay for our domain renewal. Um, yeah. subscription each year so look you know if you can spend two three bucks if you can spare some money and throw it our way through the paypal account um hey look we'd appreciate that too but uh you know there's so many different ways you can support the show that's just one of them we really appreciate you tuning in and um listening to us talk about pinball because we love doing it almost as much as we like talking about stuff and things all right until next time <laughs> folks bye-bye see you later everyone